You can remain seated for this reading. It's from Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, starting in verse 29. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the house of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand, and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. That evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door, and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him. And when they found him, they exclaimed, Everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, Let us go somewhere else to the nearby villages so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. In the name of our Savior God, dear brothers in the ministry, family, friends, especially you, Pastor Schmitzer and your wife Karen, and kids, someone look at Stoddard, Wisconsin, and say, what's shaking there? Quiet little bedroom community to La Crosse. How much work is there to do? We're going to use these verses today to see that the ministry of Jesus and your ministry, Pastor Schmitzer, along with your wife and partner, is very intense. Whatever word you want to use, passionate, people-oriented, it's very intense. It's very passionate. What makes it so? See if you can pick it out. For starters, Jesus knew exactly who he was. There's no doubt about his identity. Born in Bethlehem. Oh, quiet little Bethlehem. Except maybe during the time that he was born, everybody, according to the decree of the Roman emperor, is there for the census. But then it goes back to being quiet little bird whisked away to Egypt, comes back to Nazareth, quiet little Nazareth. So quiet that later on the townspeople have a hard time believing that the Messiah, the Christ, would come from there. But Jesus knew who he was. Already as a 12-year-old boy in the temple, he knew who he was. He knew his identity. He knew that, and he even said it in John's Gospel, I and the Father are one. That's pretty intense. That had to be revealed to us. We wouldn't figure that out on our own in a million years. I and the Father, Jesus said, are one. So, as far as the Father and the Holy Spirit are concerned. Jesus, in his divine nature, is absolutely God and equal with the other two persons of the Trinity. He knows that. And at the same time, he is subservient as a human being 
to his father's will. Well, that's pretty intense. I would never know that. You would never know that if God hadn't revealed it to us in the scriptures. Jesus knew why he was here. Pastor Schmitzer, your identity is closely intertwined with that of Jesus Christ. You already know this. So does every pastor that's here. And I think so does every person that is here. That you need Jesus as much as every kid that was up here singing. You need Jesus Christ as much as any person who sits in one of these benches. You need Jesus and then some, as much as anybody in this congregation or outside of this congregation, your identity, your holiness, which Christ came to give, is all bound together in knowing Jesus. And you know Jesus. In a minute as you're installed, you're going to say that. You know who Jesus Christ is. and You're bound together in him. Now maybe intense is not the word that you had picked. Maybe passionate is not the word that you would pick to think about who you are, who any of you are in Jesus. But that's pretty intense. That's pretty passionate. Christ knew who he was. You know who you are. You all know whose you are. That leads into the second thought. Not only is Jesus intense about his identity, he's intense about his mission. Do you listen carefully to this reading? He healed people. He comes to the mother-in-law of Simon Peter, and he heals her. He's got a raging fever, and he heals her. The town empties out. The nursing homes empty out. The hospitals empty out. Everybody stands in line. Because they know Jesus cares. They know, they know he is compassionate. Sabbath day is done. They can't get enough of him. The next day, you talk about intensity and pressure. Jesus gets up while it's still dark, early in the morning, leaves the house, where he's staying and goes off to a solitary place where he can pray, where he can be by himself. He wants to rejuvenate. They find him. You think his ministry and his mission was not intense? They find him. And Simon and his companions say to him, what are you doing here? Everyone is looking for you. You should be out in public. You should get out more. Maybe you're puzzled by Jesus' response. He says, let us go somewhere else to the nearby villages so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So not only does Mark's gospel in particular, I like to use the word immediately, that's an intense word. Jesus does this healing immediately. But another word that all the gospels use is the word, it was necessary. Jesus could have, if he wanted to, healed every person in town. But he moves on. What are you doing out here? Let's move on. He knew what his ministry was all about. He knew his mission was not just healing people physically, as important as that was, and as much as he cared. Why had he come? I have to go the way of the cross. It is necessary. All the gospel writers use that word. This is necessary. Jesus knew what he had to do. He could differentiate between humanitarian aid and spiritual help. He came to be the rescuer. He had to go the way of the cross. 
He had to let God the Father put on him our guilt. We said it in our confession of sins already. He had to be sin for us. That was always the plan. He knew it. And he wasn't going to let anything interfere with that. He was intense about his mission. So are you, Pastor Schmitzer. And so is your wife. And so is this congregation. You're passionate about people. I'm guessing that there could be a whole flood of humanitarian things that you're getting involved in. Blood drives, food drives, it's not just unique to Alaska. People with emotional problems, people with financial problems, that's not unique to La Crosse or Holman. It's everywhere. So, Pastor Schmitzer, you're going to be looking for the wisdom of Solomon to sort through all of that and figure out, now, where does my physical help end and my spiritual ministry begin? Or sometimes they're together. One leads right into the other. You'll hardly have enough hours in the day to be able to, first of all, rejuvenate and resuscitate yourself in the words of the Savior and his mission for you, the identity that we talked about for you. You'll, you'll have hardly enough hours in the day to decide, now, how will I reach out to the people in this community who don't want to cross the stained glass threshold and come here? How am I going to go there? And how am I going to serve and instruct the kids that are sitting in front of me? And how am I going to balance preparing God's word every single week so that all of God's people hear? That's pretty intense. There's a lot to do after all. So Pastor Schmitzer and Karen, welcome to the Cooley region. The fields are ripe to the harvest. God's calling to you. And you know your identity. And you know your mission. And that's intense. Amen.